This video is sponsored by Finish the Sign Shop. Hi everyone, I'm Alan Torp and welcome, welcome back. And I guess a happy 2022 is in order. I'm going to pick up where I left it before the holidays with another episode in this Scandinavian design tour through the decades series. So if you haven't watched the previous video, I encourage you to do so now. And then come back to this one, of course. And if you like Scandinavian design, give this video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. In today's video, I am, um, wait, let me, uh, let me get into character first. There, much better. Okay, so where was I? Yeah, in today's video, I'm going to chat about the 1970s which marks the end of what is often referred to as the golden age of Scandinavian design and the massive Nordic design output during the previous decades. And to be honest, most Scandinavian interior design from the 70s is quite depressing. Pretty much like the state of the world at this point. Everything just seemed to come in any shade of brown. Just look at this jacket. It could easily be the same fabric as the couches of the 70s. Of course, designers like Anna Jacobsen, Elva Alto and Werner Panzen, whose design I talked about in the previous video, were still hanging around in the 70s and were still producing great designs. But even their popularity started to fade. So, okay, enough. <sighs> No more sad stories, I promise. On a happy note, IKEA actually opened its first store outside Scandinavia in 1973 in Zurich, Switzerland. And we all know how that's going on still. We can also point our view further north, to Finland, because a guy named Tapio Viekala, if any Finns are watching, you are more than welcome to mark my pronouncement in the comments below. Anyway, during the rather crucial period of Scandinavian design, he designed more than 400 different art, glass objects and glassware series for Itala, putting both himself and Itala on the international design map. Viekala's countryman Oiva Toika is another great name in Scandinavian glass design. Originally trained in ceramic, Toika took up glass design later in life and made a name for himself as one of Italy's highly regarded designer. His iconic collection of Italy's birds began to spread back in 1972 and soon won the hearts of collectors all over the world. Since then, Toika has created more than 400 truly poetic and imaginative birds all individually mind blown and unique. Very on trend with color scheme I mentioned before, you have Ilpad. Originally released in 1976 by Royal Copenhagen, the Ilpad Bowl was part of the 1970s very popular stoneware collection that has just recently been released and reintroduced by Danish furniture company FDB. Möbler. The Ilpat series is based on a very unique ceramic material that can distribute heat perfectly and withstand large temperature fluctuations. Designer Grete Meyer aimed at creating a highly versatile stoneware range that could be equally well suited for cooking, serving and storing food. The Ilpat bowls and dishes can be moved directly from the freezer to the oven from oven to dining table and from the dining table to the dishwasher. Pretty neat. I'm leaving this decade with probably one of the most recognized vacuum jugs ever. The Stelton EM77. I am just going to say it because there is no doubt this one is the most well-known jug in the world and 
indistributable icon of Scandinavian design, designed in 1977, hence the name, by Erik Maunussen. Like all other products mentioned in today's video, you can get so many of Idola's birds, the Ilpot Stoneware Collection and the EM77 Jack on Finnish Design Shop. All linked in the description below. Finnish Design Shop is also today's sponsor. This is the go-to shop for everything Scandinavian design. Actually, they are the world's largest store specialized in Nordic design. They are the official dealer of over 280 brands, have nearly 90,000 items in stock, and they ship super fast to over 180 countries. And of course, they only sell authentic products. Also, unfinished design shop, you can find modern design which is inspired by the 70s design. Like the Rande Pendant Light, designed by Oliver Schrick, produced by Gooby, or Firm Living's Meadow Rock the Nuts, to the classic Shack Rocks of the 70s. Let's leave the 70s behind and get to the more fun decade, the 80s. It was a time and a decade that stood out. It was grand in every way, the shoulder padding, the collars, and of course the large hair. It's also the decade I was born, which for obvious reasons makes it a very significant decade for so many other reasons than decor. But wait. It's also the decade where girls just wanna have fun and we dressed very colorful. I don't remember. I remember our couch was in this horse blanket like woolly design. We had it for years. And we had plenty of pine. I remember pine. We probably weren't the most trend setting people back then, but we had pine. The walls and curtains in the 80s were normally covered with pattern and prints in pastel colors. If we could get that horrible hessian or burlap as you call it in America off the walls. It was extremely popular throughout the 60s and 70s. And you know what I love the most from this decade? The waterbed. Oh my god, what happened to that one? Switzerland apparently. 10% of the Swiss sleeps on water. Who knew? Anyway, I know I talked about Penton doing the 50s and 60s video too, but I just couldn't do this decade without mentioning the Pentop lamp, designed by Werner Penton in the 1980. It's just so joyful and elegant and really a design lamp icon, if you ask me. We also said hello to Montana's very popular modular system for the first time, created by Peter Lesson in 1982. And still to this day, all of Montana's products are produced here in Denmark. I am actually in awe how they have successfully kept their popularity alive. Maybe now more than ever, and with a little bit of help from some very talented influences. They have such a simple product which can just evolve into endless setups. And instead of developing other products on that, like we've seen with brands like By Lesson and Vip, I mean, the bin has now developed into a pepper grinder and a chair, or whatever the newest Vip product is, which just dilutes the product and the brand in my opinion but not Montana. Okay, so to be fair, they have tried their luck with a chair and a stool, but quickly figured out their product is the modular system and developed only to make that product even better. Okay, so that's it for me today. I hope you like this kind of video and I'm still considering making one more video in this series about the 90s and the 2000s. What do you think? 
If you want that video, sound it off in the comments below. And with that, thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Until next time.